Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dave Dufour here at Final Expense Agent Mentor at feagentmentor.com, where I help agents like you succeed in selling life insurance. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. As you can see, I've got a brand new setup here uh, in nice natural light. Uh, I tell you what, if you've ever done video recordings, it can be a pain to try to get the lighting just right. And with this setup, I don't have these two glaring light bulbs in my eyeballs burning my retinas off. So I'm glad to be here today in front of a window. So the purpose of today's video is specifically to talk about why and how insurance agents can build both rapport and trust in their insurance sales presentation. So this video is specifically for any insurance agents out there who are just getting started and want to clean up and improve their sales capabilities and sales skills so that ultimately they can make a better connection to their prospects, better qualify and then close them into an insurance contract. So it doesn't matter what you're selling, the training in today's video is definitely relevant regardless of your uh, product that you're selling. So let's talk a bit, little bit about rapport and um, why it's important as well as trust too. So any sort of interaction where we're going to take somebody's money, let's face it, and uh, get uh, something of value from them, we have to overcome a natural resistance that every person has, which is essentially a survival skill, an instinct to be defensive against the unknown. And so we do that by lowering the guards that people have up and uh, letting them know through a subtle process of, of, of getting to know them as well as uh, them getting to know us that we are not a danger but we're in fact the opposite of that. We're somebody who is insistent upon helping them if there is a need to do so. And that process is what we call uh, rapport and trust building. Now, the interesting thing about building rapport and trust in an insurance sales presentation is that I think out of all the different aspects of selling, it's the least uh, canned or scripted. Uh, and it is one of those that will vary from agent to agent. Uh, a lot of it will deal with your personal preference of how you interact with people. I got done talking and, and did an, an, a really good interview the other day with a, an agent named uh, Russ. He sells Medicare and cross-sells final expense and indemnity plans. And when he was talking about rapport building, his rapport building probably, he said, doesn't last but a couple of seconds. Maybe a little small talk until he gets right into the presentation. Whereas some people are just naturally gregarious. They're... Um, the type of people that love to talk, love to listen, love to develop a friendship. And uh, so what you'll find is, is that your preference to be more one way versus the other is going to be dictated by your, your, your personality type. Uh, I am of the persuasion in my business, and I'm strictly business. I usually get in, um, take a seat at the kitchen table, and then ask a few questions and maybe no later than a minute or two begin to start the actual presentation aspect of the sales call. So you just have to kind of try this out and kind of the purpose of this video is to help you identify which direction you'll go and to give you some good more, more or less questions you can ask to better um, uh, prepare you to lower that guard. So that leads us to um, kind of the essence of what rapport building is really all about. Is rapport building about becoming best friends or is it just about becoming friendly with them? Well, rapport building, uh, as, as best described to me in a seminar I went to, um, I went down to Atlanta with an insurance group called Your Insurance Group and the guy there was talking about rapport building and essentially what he said is that all rapport building, uh, its job is to do is break the ice or to get them to laugh. And if you can just do that, then you set the table to where they have physically and mentally broken the barriers down that most people have of resisting somebody and will allow you to proceed knowing that you're not there to scam them. So the cues you can look for when you're doing this in the sales presentation, you can see me in this video. If I'm like this and I'm kind of back a little bit, physically I'm in a defensive posture, right? When my hands are crossed over myself, this is a conservative, defensive posture to protect myself. Whereas if I'm leaning forward, or if I'm, I'm rubbing my chin, these are signs that people that have interest or they're thinking, or even if their hands are just crossed, or they're smiling, or they're laughing. 
These are vulnerable positions. These are open positions. And this physical representation is, is a representation that mentally they're open-minded to. So you, those are the cues you're physically looking for that will help you get into the process of progressing your presentation. That can take a few seconds. That can take minutes. As you get better at the business of selling, usually that time period shortens down. Uh, also, uh, I'll add, um, there are things you can do in your sales presentation to better build rapport and better build trust through physical um, aspects. So one thing that a lot of trainers teach is you mirror your prospect uh, and not just physically. So if somebody's sitting back like this, maybe you take a more relaxed standpoint. If somebody's leaning in, well, you lean in too. You mirror their physicality. It doesn't just exist for that, but also in how your, your voice is, your tonality, your energy level. Some people are naturally mouse-like in, in their interactions. They're reserved. You need to be reserved too. You don't need to scream at them as they're reserved. You're going to be, they're going to be in a defensive posture because of that. So you want to match their tonality. You want to match their word choices too. That's another thing you need to mirror. You need to pick up on how they say things and what they say and mirror that in your conversation as well as their physical language too. These are unspoken, unconscious cues that will continue to build rapport and at least lower the resistance of your prospect. So why we do all this again is to get them to the point where um, we begin to introduce ourselves as the expert and frame the conversation in such a manner to where the prospect knows that we are an expert and we're here to help them and only them. And their interests are in our best interest. That's the first thing. So a kind, of, kind of along with the rapport building aspect to this is, is, the, is the concept of building trust. Now, the one thing that I'll say here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got my computer over here, so I'll look here occasionally if there's comments. Trust is, is a different aspect to rapport. Sometimes in some other videos, I have made a comment like, for example, trust. What's more important? Is it trust or rapport? Or I've even done videos about talking about why rapport is, is overrated. And I, and I do believe that's the case. Um, but it's still important to develop and at least get people to kind of like you, right? Because uh, that what is lower, lowers the, um, the, the barriers to entry, literally. Uh, but also the thing you got to be thinking about in this process is, is really more importantly than just rapport is to build an expertise status or simply put, to build trust. And trust is not an event. Trust is a process. Now, a lot of people look at something like rapport or trust as the first phase to a sales presentation. It's not. It is a process which goes throughout the presentation and it is either improving as time goes on based on what you say, how you say things, how you interact with your prospect, or it goes down. And so you have to pay special attention when you're delivering a presentation to your prospect that you think, is this helping my cause or is it taking it away? Uh, one of my favorite um, movie producers is Christopher Nolan. Uh, he, produces, uh, he produced Batman Begins, all the Batman series. Um, he produced, what else did he do? Insomnia, this excellent movie. Just started watching that last night uh, for like the 20th time. Uh, Memento, another one. Um, and so many other videos, m- movies. But the one thing I like about Nolan's work is that there is no scene that is excessive and has no place and could have been removed. A good producer, a good writer, a good presenter, what he says is specifically calculated and is specifically thought through to enhance the value of the experience that, that, their, that their person across from them has experienced, whether that's a moviegoer or your prospect. So you should think about this when you're presenting. You gotta build trust because ultimately it's trust that your prospect has for you that allows them the comfort level and, and the trust in you to hand over the money as, long, as well as their personal information to take them from skeptical prospect to happy and enthused buyer. And so every aspect of the sales presentation has to routinely build and enhance trust. If you see something that you're doing that may be casting a shade or doubt to the idea that you're trustworthy, then you need to remove that or retool the presentation to where you can continuously build that momentum towards building trust. So um, what can you say to build trust to build rapport. I'll start with trust first and then I'll go to rapport. 
a lot of the times, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you can trust me, Mr. Prospect. Some t- it was one of those things where you don't want to say it, you want to exude it. Because sometimes if you have to say, you know, I'm being completely honest with you, Mr. Prospect, if that's coming from a salesperson, well, you know, watch your wallet, you know, it's about to go away uh, or about to be empty. So you want to, I think the best agents don't have to say things like that. They just, it's, it's in their body language, it's in their connection, it's in their, their, their physical connection with the client. It's in how they demonstrate their knowledge. It's almost like it's unspoken. The prospect knows that you're an expert. They don't have to be told. They don't have to be uh, uh, beat in their minds that you're, you know what you're talking about. It's obvious that you're the expert. And so the way that you, you demonstrate this, a couple of tactics I like to use in a sales presentation. The first is, and a lot of this is really good, especially for new insurance agents, is when you're going through the introductory, introductory phase, where you tell them who you are, what you do, and why it's important to them, is to show your license, show your insurance license. Um, you know, people respond to appeals to authority. And what I mean by that is that, look, if you show your license to somebody, it is a designation that differentiates you from Joe Blow versus an actual insurance agent. And so in, in, in the mind of a prospect, you know, we're always looking for things to categorize people by. And so when we see somebody who shows us a license, well, a license means that you're a professional by, by default, by, by uh, subtlety, right? And so you, you don't even have to say, you know, you don't have to build up. You just show them the license. You let them hold it. You let them look at it and see that your name is on there. They see the date when you're licensed. They see the official state logo. All of these visual cues initiates in the prospect's mind that this is an authoritative person. Again, not directly. They don't think, oh, an authority. But it's just an automatic response when they see a license. Um, I also like to um, use, uh, sometimes I would do this with new agents, is show a picture of your family, uh, whether it's yourself uh, and your wife and your kids, your spouse and your kids, or you and your dogs, you know, whatever. Um, You know, if you show that, it breaks that bond of this is some guy in my house who is out to get me and it humanizes you. You see, that's what you want to do because the survival mechanism that people have, and again, that's what sales is all about. It's ultimately a survival tactic that people have barriers and prejudices against you. You have to take steps to take yourself out of this commonality and then break it down to show that you're human and unique and individual and special. Then people will drop the, or jettison the prejudice, and they'll look at you as a, as a unique person in your own individual life. And when you humanize yourself, that helps tremendously. So if they see a picture of your family, or they see a picture of people you love, or something like that, it immediately sparks this, oh, okay, cool, this guy's got kids. I love kids. I'm a grandparent. You start to create a connection with this prospect, because most likely they've had kids too, or they have grandkids. And if you've got little kids or teenagers, they're going to have experiences that they can share emotionally that you'll understand. So you've now connected on a human level and have jettisoned the salesperson aspect. So again, this is all specifically done with the idea in mind to, to break down these barriers that people will put up automatically and to, to get people out of that, that natural resistance mode to better align yourself with what you're saying and, and what, you have to, what you have to offer and be more open-minded to it. So some things you can do uh, also to say to build rapport. Um, If you're dealing with a couple, and it doesn't matter what you sell, you can say, hey, how long have you known each other? Um, How did you meet? Uh, How how long have you been married? What's your secret? Stuff like that, you know, it will rekindle feelings in couples that maybe have lying dormant for years because nobody's cared to ask. And they'll invigorate this emotion, right? Positivity, right? In, in between each other, and, and that helps you because you get to leverage onto that just by default. And so, you know, if you're dealing with a single person, you can ask them, you know, one great tactic to do, and you got to get good at doing this and picking this out, is looking around and, and seeing what's on the wall and just making small talk about it. Again, this is all done with the idea of, of finding something that you find unique. You want to be genuine when you ask questions about rapport. You don't want to fake it, okay? 
you really do have to have an interest in people because people can tell if you're just half interested in how you ask the question. You have to be sincere in regard. Like if you walked in my room, you can see back there that picture on the piano and you can see some other frames. <clears throat> you're going to see, if you notice, there's a health scope ad- uh, advertisement over there or, or magazine. Well, I'm an insurance agency guy. Why do I got something like that? Well, I used to be a personal trainer. So somebody asked, I'd be like, yeah, man, I used to be a personal trainer and I talked about my business and getting that conversation or you can see the record of that's uh, uh, George Gershwin, uh, Rhapsody in Blue. You know, so there's a lot of talk about that if somebody was musically inclined. You know, and you could get into me real quick by just picking up on that stuff. And you don't have to do a lot of this stuff either, guys. You know, one of the videos I've done before where I've talked about the difference between being friendly and, and friends is you just need to be friendly. And it's enough just to show that you care and you notice these things that are important to them that they probably never talk about. Like if somebody came in here and asked me about this stuff, very few people ask me about this stuff. So I'm going to be appreciative by default that somebody's noticed these little things. Again, when you notice these little details, that shows that you notice details and are careful about things. And and you you are, are careful about finding things out that are important as it relates to business too. There's that kind of, again, that tangential relationship, a related relationship, that crossover to help you make a make a better dent. So a couple of last things I'll tell you guys before I end here about uh, rapport building and, uh, and, and and trust building is that you got to do it to some extent. You don't have to spend half the presentation becoming friends. It's just important that you understand that when you enter any kind of insurance sales call, no matter what you sell, you're going to be up against some kind of resistance from your prospect. They have predetermined ideas of what a salesperson does and they've had experiences with other salespeople. So they're going to basically determine and prejudge you and put you in a box and and, and think of you in the same manner they've treated every other, based on their personal experiences, which they probably have a good reason to think that way. But you cannot let that deter you. You've got to break past the resistance that every thinking normal person is going to have. And you can't take it personally if they're kind of standoffish. It's a protection mechanism. It's a survival instinct. And you have to recognize your job is to show them that you're not like maybe the bad experiences that they've had, that you're a careful, considerate, kind person, that you actually sincerely care about these people. And so if you take the time to talk a little bit, to ask open-ended questions, that's another great thing to do, to ask them about things that, that obviously are around them that they care about, they will more than likely respond positively and you'll find within minutes that the stature, the statuesque, uh, rough, tough uh, um, disposition these people have will melt away because you've broken the ice and you've put them in a mental state of positivity and open-mindedness. So now you can proceed in telling them who you are, and why you're there, and uh, why it's a benefit to them to check you out and listen. And again, some people will need more of this. Some people will need less. Some agents will want to do more of this. Some agents will want to do less. It's not a matter of should you do rapport building or not as much as it is. got to do some of this to some extent to make a connection with your prospect because that is the only way that you're going to lower the guards to get them to listen to you. And it's all with the intent of learning about people, of helping them out and understanding that's what it takes to help you help them. My name is David Duford at Final Expense Agent Mentor, where I help agents like you succeed in selling insurance. I do videos like this every single day, Monday through Friday, on all sorts of topics related to insurance, Uh, whether that's sales training, final expense, selling annuities, interviews with top producers. I do it all uh, with the goal of helping you uh, learn something to hopefully put it to action to help you become more successful because we need more insurance agents in this business uh, as... uh, More people every single day need some kind of insurance that they just can't find on their own. If you like what you've seen here, I'd ask you to thumbs it up if you haven't already. And make sure you subscribe again if you like this kind of material because I do daily videos throughout the week uh, on all sorts of topics. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you like this. If you've got comments or questions, if you have a question about rapport building or trust building, I mean, more than happy to help you out and answer. I like taking questions from my audience. So guys, thanks again so much for watching and you guys have a profitable rest of your day. Take care.